Thank you very much. Thank you very much for the invitation. Uh, so today I'm going to talk about machine actionable DMPs. And I've seen at the beginning of the session that there are quite some expectations. Unfortunately, we have only 10 minutes today, so I won't be able to go into the details. And I think we are here today to celebrate. That's why my presentation today will focus on uh, how it all started and what are the things we can do together. So I'm also going to talk about the future. I want to provide you some examples and then there will be links that you can later check for details if you want to learn uh, more about it. So let's start with the uh, going back in time, going back in time to 2017. And to put in the right mindset in 2017, uh, Donald Trump was sworn as the president of the United States and also Great Britain triggered Article 50. Uh, but apart from that uh, developments, we also had some good developments. And this is when the story of MADMP start. And there was a workshop in Edinburgh organized by uh, Sarah Jones and, and Stephanie Sims. And there we talked a lot about DMPs. We had around 50 people from different countries discussing what are the use cases for uh, active DMPs at that time, as we call them. And this led to discussions at the LDE plenaries, the 10th in Barcelona, which basically people said, okay, let's do something together about it. And then in Montreal in the October or November, as far as I remember, we launched the DMP Common Standards uh, Working Group to do the work. And back in 2017, uh, we were mostly uh, showing this slide to people. And I know that many of you might have seen this slide several times, but it's a very important one for us because uh, we defined what machine actionable DMPs should be. So we wanted them to be living documents. The goal was to automate the data management by allowing uh, a way for different stakeholders to, to communicate efficiently and to provide uh, a possibility for systems uh, to act on, on their uh, behalf. And of course, we always wanted to have the funders in scope, uh, so there was a need to facilitate validation of DMPs. And we said at that time that we need three things to make it happen. We need to have well-defined LDM workflows. So basically, we need to know who is responsible for what and, and in what way can the uh, stakeholders interact. We wanted the infrastructure to support them, so tools like DMP Online, but, but also uh, other types of tools. And we also needed a common way to represent information. And this was the focus of the working group that uh, was working on machine actionable data management plans. So let's go back to 2020. And now I should uh, put the context of, on, on developments in 2020, but maybe it makes no sense to talk about what's happening in 2020. So uh, let's talk about something nice uh, instead. And the nice thing in 2020 is that our uh, recommendation has been issued by RDA. So there is now an official recommendation on machine actionable data management plans. The specification itself uh, consists uh, of a set of fields which are mostly optional and uh, it can be customized to serve specific settings, specific business needs, or sometimes you can translate business needs as funder needs. And this is not a questionnaire and not a, temp not a template, something we always keep on uh, reminding. This is just a way to efficiently break down information uh, contained in traditional DMPs and to enable exchange of, of information between, between different systems. Uh, DMP Online and the whole family of uh, products based on DMP roadmap, such as DMP Tool, DMP Opidor, are currently adopting the recommendation. Uh, I know that maybe coming to a party and mentioning also the other uh, tools is maybe not nice, but Others are also implementing it. And I think that was the spirit of why uh, the DCC decided to, to help in establishing the group. So that's it's not only a recommendation for DMP online, but for the uh, whole community. So now in 2020, uh, out of these three things we had to implement, we have implemented, uh, we have done the, we have the common standard to represent the information. And the future should focus on the others to two points. We need to keep on developing the workflows and developing the infrastructure. 
And I'm going to focus a bit on the infrastructure and how we can actually apply this common standard to, to build automations and to uh, create new opportunities. So one of the things that is still open and I think uh, something is required from the community is mapping to founder templates. So we have a set of fields in the main DMPs and now we just need to select which of them we need to uh, transmit to the founder so that it's compliant uh, with the requirements. Uh, we should provide a common guidance and simply say, okay, these 10 fields are needed when we talk to Science Europe and these 20 fields are needed when we talk to NSF. While developing the guidance, while, while developing the, the standard, we analyze the template. So it's not like something is missing. It's just about having a consistent way of using the, uh, the standard. There are some examples, there are some prototypes. Uh, this is something we, will, we can later check uh, and we can uh, start a discussion at LDA about that. Uh, another way to continue work with MADMPs is to automate exchange of link of information. So we would like other objects, for example, research uh, data packaging um, uh, concepts or, or knowledge graphs to refer to MADMPs, either by pointing to a DMP or by reusing some information from the DMP or providing the information to the DMP. And here we have uh, links to some examples. So there is one nice presentation from our colleagues on integration with open and knowledge graph. There is also a presentation on uh, integration with a research object crates for data packaging. Uh, MA DMPs also have a serialization as an ontology to uh, address the needs of the semantic web and, and linked open data. And there are also some uh, there's also some work going on integration with data repositories such as Invenio or Dataverse. So if you click on the links, you will later be able to check out the details. Um, another way of using MADMP is to eventually build systems that allow us to expose parts of MADMP. So here you can see in the screenshot an example of a prototype built by the students of Teuvin that allow you to search and filter relevant information from within the DMP. So for example, you can say, I want to have uh, MA DMPs, which were submitted to the specific funder, are you reusing a specific data set, which is located in repository ABC. And then you will get all uh, MA DMPs that fulfill this criteria. Currently, this is not really possible with the traditional DMPs because you would have to make a full text search. Of course, it's possible to also restrict access to specific fields and and um, and not show everything what you would what you wouldn't like to to show but this is just a concept you would need a product that actually provides this uh, functionality uh, you cannot forget that MADMPs is something that uh, also has to be deployed locally so the whole power of dmps is when you start deploying them in your local infrastructure when you use them as a glue to integrate your systems to exchange information uh, between them. So there's a lot of work we can do as a community, but to really feel the benefits, you have to make it fit into your own institutional context. There are also cases uh, which are beyond standard cases. Uh, during the last plenary, we had a plenary, we had a presentation made by Claire Austin who is thinking of using MADMPs in the governmental context. So uh, I, can, I would like to point you to, to contact Claire if you think that uh, such a use case uh, is applicable maybe also in your case, or you would like to work together with her on that. Uh, so to sum up, what's next? Uh, come to the active DMPs interest group, which acts as the umbrella for all things related to active DMPs, machine actionable DMPs and in general DMPs. Bring your novel ideas. This is a place for discussion on all, um, all these deployments and activities I have just described um, uh, related to MA DMPs. The DMP Common Standards Working Group will just continue to maintain the recommendation. So we will make updates to specification if needed and support the adoption. But if you have any novel use cases, please bring it to the uh, open group or to the open group, which is the active DMPs interest group. Uh, so if you have any contacts, questions, ideas, success stories, please, please feel free to contact chairs from any of the working or interest uh, groups. If you want to read more about things we did, here is a, a list of, of publications we have written in the last three years. 
that's all from my side. Thank you very much for the invitation again. And all the best to DMP online.